I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of this newsletter is going to be how to become a successful real estate investor. Well, before I became a full-time life coach, I spent probably 15, 18 years, I guess, in the construction and real estate industry at full-time, basically from the time I was in college through the time that I have in my businesses. And so I bought, fixed up, and resold literally hundreds of houses over the years to make a profit. And so I obviously became very good at it and very experienced at it. And it's still something that I enjoy to do, but it's obviously not my full-time gig anymore because it's just simply not where my heart is. And so I've got an email here from a guy who uh, sounds like he just graduated high school and he basically wants to follow in my footsteps. And so he has some questions about what I used to do and how he can get involved in it and start doing it with little money. And I'll give you a little background and, and explain to you how I did it and why I was so successful at it. He says, hey, Corey, I hope all is well, and please keep the insights coming on the awesome videos that you produce. I remember you saying you were once involved in real estate, and I just graduated from high school, and I want to become a real estate investor. Do you have any tips on getting started, and should I do it in my own name or form an LLC? He says, if I don't have much money, what are some lucrative ways I can fund myself for the success of my investment, and should I also build a conglomerate of lawyers, real estate agents, CPA, etc., to make the business run smoothly? Also, what are your thoughts on tax lien, tax deed, quiet title, etc.? Well, here's here's the bottom line. When I got into real estate, I was working in the construction industry because I went to school for construction management. I learned how to build. That was my approach. I figure if I'm going to renovate homes, I need to learn how to build first, and then I can get into it. And so that was the path that I took. So I went to college for that. I spent like five years in the construction industry. I worked for Syntex Rooney, who at the time, they were part of the largest construction group in the world. And I was working on a $150 million job at Disney World. And so I had, in years before that, I had worked for developers. I had worked for companies that built single-family homes. that did smaller commercial jobs. And so I got to see small projects and projects that were $150 million. And so I got exposed to all of the different facets of the construction industry. And so what I ended up doing and is when I just basically got to the point where I was ready to do it, I found a couple properties and I borrowed 50 grand on my credit cards and I went for it. I quit my job, my full-time job, and everybody that was in my family and friends, they all thought I was stupid and, and I was going to lose everything. I was going to lose my house in foreclosure. I was going to ruin myself financially. I was going to ruin, you know, I was married at the time. This was back when I was married to my first wife. And I obviously ignored all of those people. And so basically what I did is I did almost all of the work on the very first house that I bought. And I found a company that I bought my houses from where they basically provided heart, what was called hard equity money, which was basically non-income qualifying type of money. And because I had good credit, I was able to borrow money on my credit cards. I borrowed about 50 grand, and I used that money to pay my bills. I used it to make my mortgage payments on these two houses in addition to the mortgage payment I had in the house I had with my own wife at the time. And I also used the cash to for the repair costs. And it's like each one of these homes, they needed about ten or twelve thousand dollars worth of work. I think they were like sixty, seventy thousand dollar houses in Orlando. They were like middle class. You know, this was in the uh, late to to mid nineties that I, I got involved in doing this. And so the company that I that actually found the houses, they were a real estate company. And they basically what they did is they found the properties and would flip them to people like myself who were looking to buy, fix, and sell properties. And so basically, to make a long story short, I bought my first house, I fixed it up, and then I resold it, and I got working on my second one. And then what I realized is that in that particular business, you don't really have any income coming in and, unless you have a closing. Because when you sell the house and it has a closing, that's when you actually get your profit and you get all of the money that you put into the house in the form of mortgage payments, closing costs, and repair costs. You get all that stuff back at closing. But... If you haven't sold the house yet and you're still spending money on it, then, like I said, all your money is basically your equity is tied up in that particular property. And so 
what I eventually did was I eventually went to work for this company that I was buying my houses from because I wanted to learn more about finding them and I wanted to learn more about how to finance them and I also wanted to learn more about how to sell them because they also had people that would sell the property once it was fixed up and I wasn't really crazy about their ability to get to get my property sold and so I went to work there and I learned how to find the properties and I learned how to get them financed and I also learned how to sell them on my own and after about a year and a half I approached two guys that I worked with and asked them if they wanted to go into business with me and so they said yes and then we basically left and took the one company that I had had for several years at that point that I'd always done all what I basically formed was a subchapter S corporation and so I bought the properties in in my name and so by working at this company I also got to meet other mortgage investors the people that actually had the money to provide the mortgage financing for the property so I'll give you a, an example so a house that's say worth a hundred thousand dollars I could pick the house up maybe for sixty five thousand dollars seventy thousand dollars and say maybe it needed ten grand in work so the mortgage investor would come along and they would provide the first mortgage money and since the house was in rough shape, you can't get normal FHA financing or conventional financing. You've got to have some kind of private money available or some kind of private investor. And so I would do it two ways. Sometimes I would just get a loan from them, and, and you're going to pay 15 60% interest on stuff like that, those hard equity loans. But it was simple interest, so you're just simply making – it's just a short-term loan, and that's, that's – you know, sometimes you can get it for 12 13%. It just really depends – you can look in like the business journal or the business section of newspapers and find people that are willing to do that. But basically what I would do is I'd get a loan for seventy grand on a hundred thousand dollar house. That's a hundred thousand once it's fixed up and in like new condition again. But I would get a loan for seventy thousand dollars, which is the first mortgage amount, and then I would escrow say the ten thousand dollars for repair cost. And then I would bring in pictures as I completed the work and then they would slowly release the escrow money to me for the repairs and also I would pay the closing cost money out of pocket that type of thing and so sometimes I would do it that way where I would use my own money to fix it up and there were other times because I had been successful at it and some of these I developed relationships with these mortgage investors where they wanted to start doing joint venture and when I would do a joint venture with somebody I would make them put up all the money and all I would do is take care of managing the work and selling the selling the property and then obviously at closing they get their mortgage money back on it and they also get their money back that they provided for repairs so if I was doing a joint venture on a property like that say that it's seventy thousand dollars for the first mortgage amount they would put a loan of say like eighty five thousand dollars on that particular property and that would include the purchase price plus the closing costs and then maybe a few months worth of mortgage payments on the property and so what would happen is I would buy, they would buy it, would go into my company's name, and they would be an equity partner. And I would usually do like a 70-30% split. They would get 30% of the profit. You know, they'd still get their interest on the loan, but since I'm not putting up on my own cash, it's basically I financed 100% of the purchase price, I financed the closing costs, I financed the repair costs, and maybe a few months of mortgage payments in there. So I didn't have any cash into that particular deal, but that's how, I, you know, those are different ways that you can finance those. Because if you're in your situation, you don't have any money yet, you're going to need to partner with somebody that does actually have some cash. And you just do a simple joint venture agreement. But my suggestion to you would be to go out and get your real estate license, whatever state you're in. Every state is different. And then join your local board of realtors. Because that way you can find the properties on your own. And I'll teach you a few things. How to, how to, it's really simple how to find the properties. But it makes a huge difference if you don't know what you're doing. So you get your real estate license. You join the board of realtors. And you're going to probably be spending $1,500 to $2,000 to get your real estate license, pay for, the, pay for the school, and obviously to join the board. And so you get access to the MLS system, which is the multiple listing service. And so once you've spent a couple thousand dollars to do that, and maybe you go hang you go hang your license with somebody, and what happens is once you got access to MLS, then you simply do a search and just put in there in the description that you're looking for a handyman special needs TLC fixer upper, that kind of thing foreclosure, and then find find a property. I mean it's real simple. The idea is that 
you want to figure out what the house is worth and fixed up like new conditions, so you pull comparable sales, that, which you can do through MLS, find out what it's going to sell for, and go look at it and figure out, either take some repair contractors out there, or if you know how to estimate this stuff on your own, go figure out what it's going to cost to fix it up. And then you basically back into your purchase price. You back into what your maximum is you can pay. So you take the purchase price or the sales price once it's fixed up, less your repair costs, less your closing costs to buy it, less your closing costs to sell it, less six months worth of holding costs, which are mortgages, paying the electric, the sprinkler bill, I mean, all that kind of stuff. And obviously real estate commissions in there, if those are involved, if you have to have to pay a, if you're going to have a realtor sell it for you, but obviously you're going to be selling it on your own, but you know, you're still going to, if you have somebody who brings a buyer, you're still going to want to pay them at least 3%. So just factor all of that in there and whatever those numbers end up being, plus your profit, obviously, then you, you just back that out. And so if your costs and your holding costs and realtor expenses, title fees and all that, on a hundred thousand dollar property ends up being say forty thousand dollars with your profit and everything built in then you know that you can't pay any more than sixty thousand dollars and still make ten to fifteen thousand dollars in that property and so that's going to determine what your offer is and then you send the offer to the bank or whatever obviously you need to get your financing lined up but like I said if you put an ad in the uh, usually like the business journal just just say you want to pay 12 13 percent there's usually guys in there that have money and they're used to doing those kinds of deals and so you'll find guys in there that are advertising hard equity loans, things of that nature. And just because if you sell real estate, you make a couple commissions here and there. I mean, obviously, you don't have any money. You're not starting out with anything. And so you may have to sell general real estate first before you get into a foreclosure or a fixer upper. Or maybe you got a friend or a family member who has money. But the idea is you got to do your numbers. It's, it's real simple. And so those are some of the just, I mean, that's, I mean, like a real broad brush, but that'll give you an idea of what you you need to do. But I would start out with trying to find things on, on MLS because you can find the majority of your properties are going to be there, foreclosures, everything else. Tax sales and quiet title and all other stuff, I wouldn't mess with that stuff because you're so green and you're so new to the business. Get your foot in door, take the path of least resistance like I did. So if you have a question that you want to ask me, go to my website, click the contact me tab on the left hand side of your screen and send me one to two paragraphs max. Just give me several days to get back to you with a response. If you want to talk to me right away, the quickest way to get my help is to book a paid phone coaching session. You can do that by going to my website, click the products tab, which will be at the top of your screen, and just follow the instructions. If you want to get a digital version of my Kindle ebook, go to my website, and on the email sign up box on the right hand side, under, there is a link that will take you right to the Amazon Kindle download page for my book. Once you get there, if you don't have a Kindle device, on the right hand side of the download page is a button you can click to download a free e reader app for your smartphone, tablet device or your computer. It only takes a matter of seconds to download and install the app and complete the purchase of my book. And if you appreciate the value of the information I offer in these videos and articles and the ebook on my website, you can show your appreciation. You go right to my website on the Wibia toolbar, which will be at the bottom of your screen. Click the PayPal donate button and donate any amount that you feel is equal to the value of the information. And I will talk to you soon.